Welcome back. Now you understand why this message, you know, to the average person who is listening may not sound very practical because they look around and on the surface it seems as if those who are doing well are not those, are those who are actually ignoring these tenants. They're, they're the ones with the big cars, with the children in school abroad, they're the ones, you know, seeming to have a good life. You can have that. And what that. do you say to, no, to you, people you who can, are watching that? You can have all that by still living a godly life. A godly man should be a prosperous man. He should prosper because he's following God's principles. But if you're wicked and you're prosper, you see, the Bible has made very clear distinction between the prosperity of the righteous and the prosperity of the wicked. What is that distinction? You win by righteousness. For example, see it now a man diligent in his duties, he will not stand before mere men, he will stand before kings. Once upon a time, there was no Adeboye on this, uh, on, uh, uh, on, in, in this country, nobody knew him. There was no Kumui, nobody knew them. But the time came when they came into manifestation. I don't want to use my example because those are the big ones in the faith and we are, we are mentored by them. Do you understand me? And there are others who have come after them. It's turn by turn. Let me tell you, uh, the consecration of those men at a point in time, I can tell you because I work with them closely. I was in deeper life for five years. I was a redeemed for five years. I work with them closely. I saw their sacrifices. I saw their consecration. But there's no man who works with God that God will not honor. But if you now go and reach yourself by compromising your faith and by stealing, the Bible calls that the prosperity of the wicked. And David said, David, like anyone watching tonight, said, I was grieved in my heart when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. That they were, but he now saw that they were standing in slippery places. Look at those men that you could call Christian leaders and Christian pastors who used funds in the bank to do what they did. Where are they today? Where are they today? What goes around comes around. The hen will come home to roost. Your private life, if it doesn't match your public life, one day they are, your private life will shout. Now, you talked about the fact that the Ten Commandments of God, as far as Christianity is concerned, have been you know, um, squeezed into one commandment, love for your neighbor, what you would like for yourself. Yes. Something like that. Maybe I massacred it's the okay. quote, but something like that. Um, would, does that apply to non-Christians? Of course, yes. See, it's a, it's a general commandment. If you look at, God took Israel out of Egypt. They had no land, no schools, no infrastructure, no hospitals. That, cannot be, that could not be, I mean, the Nigerian situation of today could not be as bad as that. But he gave them law. And he said, if you could keep this set of laws, not just the Ten Commandments, he gave them law governing agriculture, governing business ethics and relationship, governing a standing army and how to run your country. He gave them law before he gave them their land. The problem in our nation is that we are a lawless nation. There's anarchy here, there's disorder. Law is not honorable in our country, and therefore there's all kinds of crises breaking forth. And we have, we have created a nation where some are above the law. Recently, a court brought out an injunction that a former president should not sell his book or even launch his book or present it to the public, but he ignored it and he still did it. And I will go to court and get another judgment. So the, the woman of justice, the veil around her eyes has been removed. And when there is no, when there is no law, there will be lawlessness. So, Israel, so, so again, my question is, Love thy neighbor as thyself. Is that the tenet of Christianity on how Christians should live with everybody, including Buddhists, Muslims, and everybody else within their community? It, that's the way they should live. Why isn't it happening, do you think? You can't say it's not happening. But, but we, we are very say, fractured right now. You can't now, say so it's not widespread. Know. It's not widespread. But see, the minority that is right will become the majority. The majority that is wrong will become the minority. It's a question of time. If those who are following it are consistent, they'll be gaining mileage little by little, little by little. I mentioned once upon a time there was no Adeboye, once upon a time there was no Kumui. But the time came that God released them, and they have large followership across the nations of the earth. Today, if those men of influence 
will maintain what is right and say what is right, you will see that there will be terror in the enemy's camp. Now, traditionally, um, we've seen in places like South America, for example, the church has played a very active and critical role in sort of what people call revolutions, where governments have been changed, you know, to, to make life better for regular people. Does the Nigerian church have a, does it have a role to play in, in nation building, in taking us back from the precipice and resolving the problems we're facing today? You are tempting me, but I'll fall into this temptation <laughs> deliberately. The church should do that and much more. The church should not just criticize the government on Sunday and criticize leaders, but provide solutions to the problems. There are critics who just talk anyhow, but there are those, this is what you have done wrong, this is how to do it right. The church in South America did what it did because they know what the role, they call it liberation theology. Uh, and some have taken it to an extreme also, that the church and the state are more or less becoming the same thing. There's a thin line. Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, it's now become fashionable for pastors to go into politics. But some of us had to be the barrier breaker to break that. And so now they're welcome on the turf and more people will still come and be counselors and be legislators and, and replace the legislators that we have in our land. Uh, see, every time I go to Dubai, a part of me is grieved because United Arab Emirates once upon a time came to Nigeria to borrow money. And here we are today. I want to ask Northern leaders also, whether Christian or Muslim, is the Islam being practiced in UAE or in Kuwait different from the one we are practicing here, where we make thousands and millions of our marjories, no hope, no skills, no development, and we use them to foment trouble and crisis? How many people Christians are willing to go into those areas to evangelize? We prefer Abuja, we prefer Port Harcourt, we prefer Lagos, where there is population density and where we can easily make money. We do target evangelism rather than listening to God to lead us to where he wants us to go. And so the answer is yes, the church does have a very important role. A very important role in governance, in everything. In fact, God created three institutions only. As far as I know, I stand to be corrected. The first is family. The second is government. The third is church. And the family supplies raw materials for both church and government. So whatever a man does in church and whatever a man does in government is an ambassador of his home and his own values. If this Christian faith and tenets are taught to our children and, and, and they embrace it, the more the merrier God will have a godly offspring on the face of the earth. There will be a residue of people who will continue to bring change like catalysts in society. Let us take another quick break. When we return, we speak about the future of Christianity in an increasingly fractured and faithless world. Don't go away. You may wonder why I switched to layer milk. Well, I got to look after my fitness trainer told me about the good stuff inside. You should try it. Exercise and making good nutrition decisions like drinking calcium and rich lawyer milk every day is vital because it helps you nourish your bones and body so that you can live a more active life every day. That's why I encourage my clients and ensure that my family gets their lawyer milk too. So, make that switch to calcium fortified lawyer milk because it's what's inside that matters. 